Hello everyone, this is Ken Hayashi. Uh, thank you very much for joining today's lecture. Uh, this has been by request, so this is going to be a lot longer than the typical YouTube video that's out there. It is a combination of all the work that I have just uh, created over the last year and just putting it all together. Uh, obviously, if I had explained every single moment of this, and you'll know what I'm talking about, it'd be hours long. So you can do all your research, and I'll definitely place the links on all that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm just going to just go ahead and continue on. Now, a little bit of background of who I am. Uh, my name's Ken Hayashi. A uh, little background, I went to Oxford University. Uh, I did study uh, English literature and classical theater history there. Uh, I had an opportunity to do that. I also uh, do have a, an off-Broadway play that I've written uh, that I've produced in New York uh, by the foundation of the Dramatist Guild, which was an honor for me to uh, have a pl uh, an off-Broadway play uh, produced in New York. So I am more of a writer. Um, that's on that sense. Uh, on top of that, I am also an entrepreneur. I'm the author of the book Millionaire by 26. You can pick it up at any uh, bookstore, Amazon, anything like that. Go look it up, please. And I am, again, going to show you all the, the links uh, down below so that you don't have to go scramble and go do that. I'll have all that. Stop the video anytime and go copy and paste that link. Okay, so we just move forward. I've owned other business. I've owned several types of businesses, including like a foreign currency hedge fund at one point. I've owned a direct marketing company. I've also been a business consultant uh, to a couple of people as a as a writer, as a copywriter myself. I've also my client also includes our current president, of the United States. He wasn't president then, but I was Donald Trump's copywriter at one point for one of his companies. Uh, here is also I've been a consultant to uh, many people, including Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for the Soul on some of his projects. There, right there, is uh, Dr. John Gray says uh, Ken Hayashi provides practical insight and simple wealth building techniques that anyone can do. Dr. John Gray, author of Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus. I'm sure you know who that is, and uh, Brian Tracy. If many of you know who that is, uh, this book shows you how to jump the line and become financially successful faster than you ever thought possible. Brian T Tracy, uh, author and international renowned speaker. Thank you very much. And today, I am also a business consultant for Kevin Harrington and Michael Beckwith's new company, uh, Mindset24 Global, where I am tr training individuals on how to have a samurai mindset, right? Samurai mindset. Uh, that's my heritage as well as what I type of mindset that I had to have in order to achieve some of the successes that I have, right? So I'll explain a little bit more about that in, uh, in, the, in the next few minutes. I do also have a personal life, okay? Uh, on top of being an entrepreneur, I have a personal life, my personal life. I, I have four uh, children um, that I care for very much, <laughs> of course. Um, that's my, my four beautiful children, and my three daughters, my young son right there. Um, I also have four separate black belts. I've been trained in that in over 20 years. And uh, I had an opportunity to work with the uh, uh, MCMAC uh, program, which is the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, where I got to train Marines on getting their second degree in their MCMAC program. So uh, I had an honor to do that. Uh, also, I've also trained 50 world karate champions, mostly kids, uh, but they it is a world level competition. We have got representatives from many countries and we're there. It's large, one of the largest competitions uh, in karate before it goes to the Olympics in the world. And uh, trained over 50 world karate champions in forms, point fighting, continuous fighting, and, and uh, various sorts. So that's a little bit about my personal life. Uh, the thing is this. I have a secret, and this is a secret that I chose not to share, and it's a secret that I've held for 25 years, and this is 2018, and I'm about to reveal to the world my secret. Now there's a reason I don't, <laughs> I haven't shared this secret, and think about this for a moment. Let's say you are working for the United States government as like a Air Force pilot or something like that, right? 
and you're flying around uh, as an officer uh, for the United States military and you see something that flies by you and it doesn't look ordinary it looks a little unusual and you you land and it's not like you just missed you know like a little blip there you saw it fly right by you're like whoa what was that so you land and your commanding officer says listen uh, do not go running to the press and tell people what you saw or it's treason right so you know you keep it a, you keep it a secret or you know people would just think you're crazy if you saw something up you know while you're flying around doing your missions so just think of it that way so I have the secret that I cared not to share because it would pull me into that category and I just don't want to be that I mean I have a I have a regular life I don't I don't want to be thrown into that category but today I am about to share this by request by many people okay so this is here it is now as I'm about to share this let me kind of pause uh, uh, have you ponder a question that I'm gonna have towards you okay think about this for a second let's say that you uh, there was an author out there okay and this author came up with a fictional story and that fictional story is about a bodybuilder all right and this bodybuilder uh, becomes uh, comes over to this country and becomes an actor and he plays a very iconic role where he ends up uh, playing like an android right? and eventually he gets out of acting and then writes uh, it's, it's a story about this actor that becomes eventually governor of the land now the question I like to ask you is who would that story be about so question number one and let's all participate here. It'll make the experience a lot more fun, interactive. Otherwise, it's a lot of information that I'm going to pr provide to you. I, I'm guaranteeing it's a lot of information. You probably have to listen to this more than once, okay? especially if you are very interested in the story and the reason you're watching this in the first place. Who would that story uh, be about? Hmm. Okay, so that's question one. Now, Again, uh, right now, let's just make this interactive. So I want to go ahead and pause the video and type in the answer in the comment section right now in, on YouTube. All right. All you have to do is pa hit pause on the video. Who would that story be about? A fictional person says, hey, listen, I wrote this story about a bodybuilder, becomes an actor, uh, but he plays an iconic role as an android and becomes, eventually becomes governor of the, la of the land. Who would that story be about? So go ahead and pause that video now and t type that answer in. Question one, so write question one or Q1 and your answer. We're going to have a couple of questions here, so participate, okay? And at least, at least, if you don't want to type it in and be accountable for your answers, okay, some of the questions are a little harder than others, that's okay, but I'd like to be interactive here, so go ahead and type that in. If you're not going to do that, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and just write it down on a piece of paper. Get a blank piece of paper right now, pause it, and just write it down. Question one, what's your answer? All right, so pause the video now. All right, so hopefully you came back and you did pause the video. You didn't just listen through, but that's where it is. Okay, so that's the answer. And by the end of this video I will go over all the answers see how you did okay that's that's probably an easy answer question but we're gonna go through that all right so that's question number one so I'd like to share with you a secret of mine okay uh, this is on the video called uh, who is the samurai wizard if everyone looks up on top right there I'll always have a YouTube uh, it's not a, a live link because I can't put so many li links up there but that's the name of the video you can google uh, go on youtube and type that in i'll also have the link in the description below so that you can just go ahead and look at it on your time on your own time and at leisure but i'm just going to go ahead and just check out the video so let's take a look at the video now all right this is the secret that i've kept for 25 years all right here it is 
Ken Hayashi is an author, entrepreneur, and father of four. Hayashi's story begins as a young boy, where he discovers that both his parents practice magic. His father having been written up in the Smithsonian, and his mother had been a performing magician and was an actual practicing witch. He then discovers and attends the only real school of magic in the world, the world famous Academy of Magical Arts. This is where he honed his psychic and telepathic abilities, witchcraft and wizardry, specializing in both light and dark arts of magic. There he meets a young boy and a girl who also practice magic. Hayashi and the girl wizard eventually become the most powerful wizards at the academy. And as a teenage boy, eventually beats the number one most commercially successful magician in history, David Copperfield. While David Copperfield had made a motorcycle appear, Hayashi, also known as the one and only Samurai Wizard, made a Corvette appear. While Copperfield flew on stage by himself, the Samurai Wizard had a magic production show with over 180 backup dancers. And the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences selected the Samurai Wizard over Copperfield to open a couple of Emmy Award shows in 1992. The Samurai Wizard is a powerful story that may have been the inspiration behind a similar story written and released several years later of A Boy Who Lived. First published in 1997, it is a fictional fantasy story of a boy being a wizard who discovers both his parents happen to be wizards, attends a school of magic where he studies witchcraft and wizardry. There he meets a boy and a girl who practices magic. He rises to become the greatest wizard there at the school. Then, as a teenage boy, eventually beats the most evil wizard of all time. The fact that five out of five specific key components matching up in both the real and the fictional story of the boy wizard has the exact same odds of winning the lottery, or may just be a strange coincidence. However, the story does not just stop there. The story continues with the protector that had been there throughout the entire journey. The magical golden sphere that allowed both characters to be celebrated at both wizarding schools. The arch nemesis that continues to attempt to torment them. The twins. And finally, Oxford University, the school where the samurai wizard actually attends which happens to be the exact school where the movie version of the fictional story had been filmed. With the additional five identical coincidences to match up again, it's as if someone happened to win the lottery. Twice. The Samurai Wizard had been documented by television reporters, newspaper coverages, magazines, live show performances, and he had millions of fans around the world, from all across the United States, Japan, and the United Kingdom. The Samurai Wizard is a factual story of a boy wizard, or the real boy who lived, who had real life adventures, both in the wizarding world and in the real world. To learn more of the true story of the Samurai Wizard, Subscribe now, comment and share with any other fans of the Teenage Boy Wizard that beats the greatest wizard in the world. And also watch the other evidence documentaries, real proof of the real story of the boy who lived. Okay, so that was something that was part of my life a long time ago. And I cared not to share that with anybody till now. Now, some people may think, well, well, of course you wouldn't want to share that. That sounds ridiculous that that was actually, if, if that is true. So that's what today's lecture is going to be about. Is that something that actually did happen? So let's just, just really quickly just go over the review. By the way, this is my life, what happened from the time of 1983 through 1992. Okay, that's when I graduated high school in 1992. Um, this I had accomplished all of that before I graduate high school uh, and then if you know the Harry Potter story got 
published in 1997. And these are some of the details. Obviously, I can't go into the full lecture, and I'll explain that why, because there are plenty of videos, and I'll give you all the links to them again, uh, that talk about all that. So we're talking about these five things that match, parents that are magicians, you know, uh, school of magic, boy and girl magician, all these things, um, where I actually do a side-by-side -side comparison on some of these. That's actually the real school, Academy of Magical Arts. It's at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. It is a private club, and it is not open to the public. It's not a tourist attraction. It's usually open only, uh, to, well, not usually. It's only open to the Hollywood elites and people that are members of that club. And in order to become a member, it's a huge application process in order to become a member of that club. Anybody just can't show up and want to go, hey, I'd like to make reservations, check it out. You can't do that. So that's the video where I'm explaining uh, just the just the tip of the iceberg of the differences right so we go over all that and we're not going to go over all this right now uh, this is what had happened I had beaten David Copperfield uh, by size of my illusion the scale of my show 180 performers versus a single person and the, uh, the, uh, the, the size the scale and the status status was I did the Emmys well, he did not do the Emmys. I got selected to do the Emmys. He did not. He didn't do the Oscars that year or, or anything else, the Grammys or the Tonys. So that's what it was my life. Yes, it's not a fictionalized evil wizard, and I don't think David Copperfield's evil at all, but he was the greatest wizard in the world, according to uh, Forrest Magazine. He is the most commercially successful wizard in the world or magician in the world okay, in history. Uh, and there's the, the, the thing as we saw in the video, Golden Spheres, the Protector guy, the twins. So this is all review. We've already saw that. And I, as I explained, I went to Oxford University. And then the, the, the funny thing about it matching up so closely with my story. Okay? And that's what you see in that video. It's obviously a short video. Okay? Oxford and Oxford. Okay. Now, uh, and that's like winning water twice. So the question number two is why does the boy wizard stories match that is what today's seminar lecture will be about now do not stop and write it down now i'm going to give you a couple options okay this question has been posed on to other people in the past and we've had some common answers that people have said but do not answer that question just yet i know in your mind you're probably thinking well, why does the story match? You may have some ideas. But go ahead and write it down when it's appropriate. So I'm going to give you some information first, and then you can decide, hey, this is the time for me. Uh, I'm going to tell you, this is the time for you to go ahead and type your answer in. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. So play, let's play along here. Let's have some fun here. Okay. You're going to listen to this by request by many people. So let's just play along here. If you're going to shut off and say, hey, listen, the story does not match. This is all a lie. I, I can't watch this. Then don't watch this. That's fine. I'm not here to pound this onto your brain. But for the people that really want to know why does the story match, on today's lecture, I am finally, after 25 years, over 25 years, I'm going to explain why the story happens to match. I'm going to explain that. Okay. So if you want to know that, Tag along. All right. So the first one is because it's a lie. It's a lie. Someone's lying to you. Okay. Second one is B, I'm copying Rawlings' story. Right? I'm just writing on her coattails and obviously copying her story to make it look like I somehow had an exact same life of her character, Harry Potter. Okay, that's B. C, magicians. Fine, maybe it does match, but it doesn't matter because magicians are not wizards. Wizards is obviously the mythological wizard out there, and magicians are just, you know, people doing silly card tricks and stuff like that. You're just a guy pulling cards out of, you know, like rabbits out of a hat and doing card tricks and coin tricks and, and trying to claim that you're freaking Harry Potter. That's ridiculous. Magicians are not wizards, okay? So are you so 
with me so far? It's one of these answers, by the way. It's going to be one of these answers, okay? Next one is, it's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. You know what? Harry, J.K. Rowling came up with this wonderful, fantastic story that has, you know, hit the hearts of millions and millions of people across America, United, uh, the, the UK, and the world, and it's just a coincidence that they happen to match. Okay, and finally, it was based on a true story that the Harry Potter story was actually based on a true story. So think about that for a second. Do not answer yet because I'm going to provide you some information so that you could make an informed decision. Does that make sense? Can can I provide you some information so that you can make some informed decision? And you know what? If you got some friends and family with you right now and you're watching this video, have them come over, crowd around this video right now and have them watch and have them take the quiz and see who thinks they know the answer. I guarantee you it's going to be one of these five answers. Is it a lie? Was I copying Rawlings' story? Magicians are just not wizards. It's a coincidence. It's just a coincidence or it's based on true events. Okay? So that's the answer. Okay? And, and by the way, the only two people in the world that knows the answers is J.K. Rowling and myself. Just FYI. Okay? Just if you have an opinion that's maybe something what they've read or your certain beliefs that you have because you have a connection to the book, that's fine. But the only two people that really know the answer is her and I. Why does the Boy Wizard story match? All right, so let's continue on. Let's just move along here. All right. So, again, the link up there, YouTube, these are the links up there. It's called the Hogwarts Castles versus the Magic Castle. And I've got a second video called The Real School of Wizardry. So every time I'm going through these slides, make sure to take a note of some of these up there because each one of those videos, they can last anywhere from, some of them are only five minutes long, 10 minutes long, some of them are 30 minutes long to explain some of these things because it takes a long time to explain all this. I'm not gonna do that on today's video. I'm just gonna try to breeze by it. But if you want the evidence without you just jumping to conclusions, go ahead and take a look at it. Look at those videos. If you want to Google this stuff, go ahead and Google, Google it as well. The only thing you cannot Google is who I am before the, the secret that I had kept this whole time. All right. All right. So first things first, in that thing about the first, there's 10 things that match up. Okay, with the current story, but let's just even look at the different the 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 similarities between Hogwarts Castle versus the Magic Castle, and that's that video where you you'll see that the differences between the two. I'm sorry, the similarities between the two. Let's just go into that. The Magic Academy of Magical Arts and the School of Wizardry, and that's the name of it. actually it's School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, right? So, uh, I, I had it done that way because do you know what is another word for uh, academy school that's right it's school what's another word for wizardry magic so school of wizardry literally translates to the academy of magical arts and just so you know the academy of magical arts started in the, back back in the 60s okay uh, that that facility was built in 1900s and some of you are going like well the uh hogwarts castle was built centuries ago that's a story okay jk rowling wrote this book in 1997 the academy of magical arts existed it, it, it first started in 1900 uh, uh uh and it actually opened for business in 1963 called the academy of magical arts it literally translates the same academy is school Magic arts is wizardry. It's the same, okay. And we studied all kinds of uh, magic there, uh, and I, I, I could get into how much stuff that we studied there, but I'm not gonna do it right now because I could just do a whole lecture on what we ended up studying there. We were supposed to keep it a secret what we studied there, and it is not card tricks, okay. We did not study card tricks at this castle, Hidden Castle in Hollywood, California. Now, when did I go to that school there? Well, I actually happened to go to that school in 1990. 
Interesting enough, uh, J.K. Rowling on an A&E documentary, and I'll show you some of that, uh, talks about a boy that started at that school of wizardry in 1990. She was going to from Manchester to London on a train. It got stuck. It stopped. And then she thought of this great idea the same year. Really, the same year. Out of all the years it could have been happening to me, like I could have gone to that school in 1980. I could have gone in the 1970s. I mean, it could have been any year, but she wrote the book about me, or I'm sorry, a, um, a boy wizard going to the school of wizardry in 1990, the summer of 1990. When did I go to school there? Summer of 1990. <laughs> that's, that's actually when I went there. Okay. There's the owl, and I'll, I'll go over all this stuff. So this is not, we're, it'll take forever if I do this. So owl, there's a wand, golden sphere, uh, secret entrance, secret entrance, library, ghost. Okay, if you check out those videos, it'll go through all that stuff. Moving paintings, moving paintings. Headmaster, which is named um, Rodor. The, their head, headmaster is called Dumbledore, okay? Diane Zimmerman. Uh, th this is all in the documentary, so let's take a look. This one is in the A&E documentary over to the right. She admits on there when she came up with the story in the summer of 1990. Go check out that documentary. Okay, the year Harry Potter attended Hogwarts. You could hear her talking about it. Over to the left, you can see the newspaper articles that explains and showcases when I actually opened, not only did I attend at the Academy of Magical Arts, the funny thing is on my first day of class, my first day of class, I demonstrated showing uh, these, these, uh, these golden spheres and I had gotten selected to open the future stars of magic on my first day of class it's very nice you know it was a very it was a huge honor this floating ball golden sphere okay that was that interesting uh, there's the wands that we uh, that is showcased in that that's over to the left the wands that they they give out at the academy as the if you become magician of the year okay these are actual wands that we, that, that the academy provides the wands over to the right you know right you know who that is that's harry potter the owl the owl really okay if you look at it okay over to the left you see all the owl symbols within the academy magic arts that's the logo that's the symbolism of magic could have been a it could have been a dragon it could have been a, 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 a it could have been a um, gargoyle could have been a cat right could have been a bat it could have been a multiple of different type of animals okay but that is the symbolism of the school of our school right we've gotten the secret entrance we've gotten the secret library that's only for the magicians even if you're a guest, you cannot go into that library. If you're a guest, you're a guest. You cannot enter that library. Secret library, there's a ghost. Yes, there is a ghost inside of the magic castle. And you actually interact with that ghost. It plays songs for you. You can ask the ghost to play you a song, Irma. And you're thinking, wow, I'd like to go there. Uh, no, sorry. It's only open to magicians. And they're private guests. Okay, it's not a tourist attraction. Uh, there's the the hallways with the moving paintings. There's the moving paintings over there. The director, my director, my instructor, the headmaster. His name is Robert Doran. Featured on the the um, documentary called Make Believe. Look it up on Netflix or anything like that. His stage name is Rodor. Interesting. Wow. I mean. You know, could she have picked a better name? Maybe, you know, something a little bit different. But that's the name. It, this cannot be denied. That's what, what it is. You can check it out, okay? His real name is Robert Dorian. But he goes under several different aliases. Bob Dorian in this one. But it is Rodor. He goes under the name Rodor. And then Miss Zimmerman, who was an award-winning magician and an enchantress. Again, featured on Make Believe. And very similar to to her character, uh, uh, Miss Mc, uh, Professor Mc, uh, McGonagall. I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong, and I'm probably going to get all flamed about that. Uh, McGonagall, okay? That's her. All right. So that right there is another 10 things that matches the first 10. And this is a fact. 
These are facts of what the school of wizardry, or I'm sorry, the school, uh, the Academy of Magical Arts is. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what it is. You can look this up. I've already compiled it all for uh, together for you and limited information on the website. However, if you go into the castle, anybody that's a member of the Academy of Magical Arts or the Mag been in the Magic Castle could testify to all of this being correct. That is correct. Ten more things. So that's at 20. Are we at 20 now? So we had the first 10, another 10. Okay. Now, there's another video. You should check this out. It is who was the real Hermione Granger. Hermione Granger, she was a heroine in the Harry Potter series. She's Harry Potter's partner. I already named her once, so we're not going to count her again. But some of the abilities that she has, and again, this is another 15-minute video, and I love this video. I, I really did this as a dedication to uh, who it was the number one teenage magician, wizard, illusionist in history was this one girl named Denise. Okay, it was Denise. And undeniably, she cannot, she is... To this day, has not ever been beaten. The scale of illusions that she can do, the magic that she can do, okay, including the star of Make Believe, the documentary. Why? Okay, well, she was at the Academy of Magical Arts. Uh, Hermione Granger, same thing, right? Uh, she was the number one female uh, magician in history, teenage female magician in history, doing the Emmy Awards, uh, doing large scale shows, uh, famous illusions, stuff like that. Okay, the thing was. It wasn't like I was standing going, wow, that girl is so special, and just looking at her and going, wow, I wish I could interact with her. I was her partner. I was her partner. Okay? Uh, she does things like she, trans we, we did things like she would transform herself into a cat, which was great, uh, and then uh, she had a magic wand, right? So, of course, magicians all have wands, I guess. Her wand's a lot cooler, my thing, but she, uh, this is her at Miss Dance Drill Team USA, where she, boom, throws fire right in front of her, everyone, at a dance competition. At a dance competition, in front of, like, laymans or muggles or whatever the heck you want to call it, boom, throws fire from her hands, Okay? featured uh, at the Miss Dance Drill Team USA in 1992. Now, 15 years later, you know, they have showcases of the wand and, tree, you know, doing spells like that, or 1997, whenever, whenever it came out. But that's what it is, right? We also have uh, Denise with her, her magical sword wand like that. I know it's a bad picture at the Emmy Awards. Uh, that's Emma Watson playing... The Hermione Granger. Now, let's keep that in mind. She is an actress. She's not a magician. She's an actress. She reads lines. Okay? She doesn't actually can make fire appear out of her hands. Okay? That's all CG. Let's just keep that in mind. But that's on that. So, if we add those two together, that's another five things that match up. So, now we're at 25 things that is undeniably matches up. Undeniably matches up. So now let's go into the Samurai Wizard, as I was known as back then. I was known as the Samurai Wizard. So was Hayashi the real Harry channel, not the video, but the channel, it has over 20 videos of different evidence videos that are just going over this. And we don't have time to go through all of them. So I just picked the top five that are definitely the most iconic iconic things out there okay so the magic sword for me over here to the left uh, samurai wizard magic sword fire i shoot fire from my hands i teleport uh i do metamorphosis me I, I transform myself into other things commanding japanese army so over to the right the boy wizard uh, jk rowling changed the names to a couple of these things she had a, mag a magic sword fire fiend or uh, fi fiend fire however they call it app Apparition, where they d disappear from different places, reappear in different places. It's called teleporting, right? Uh, metamorphosis, where you, where they take a potion and they transfigure themselves into a different person. And then the final magic scene. So these are very, very iconic things in the boy wizard story, the Harry Potter story. Now, let's they make things clear. I didn't do everything. Like, I didn't swim with mermaids. Okay? I didn't ride dragons. I didn't ride on a broomstick. Okay, did J.K. Roddy, uh, Rowling add some flavor to that and make it more interesting? Did Hollywood get their little fingers in there and do some more stuff? 
Absolutely. I sure hope they did. Okay. With Hollywood magic. But this is what I had done. I had just taken the top five just real quick. There's more than that. So again, let's take a look at this. Okay. Let's take a look with an open mind. Let's take a look. Okay. Magic Sword. Here it is. Okay. Uh, that's right there. Uh, magic 1990. Me picture with that. And, and you can see with all my videos, plenty of stuff where I'm doing with the sword. Uh, versus 2002 when when Daniel Radcliffe took that picture a uh, fire fiend that's at the magic castle it'll shoot out there 1992 at the world famous magic castle I do actually teleport I do demonstrations of that multiple times here's one uh, an audience hundreds of people in this audience right there I actually go to the back of the stage and instantly go check out that video instantly I actually reappear in the front of the stage within half a second. I disappear from the back and I reappear in the front. And when I reappear in the front, there's a reason why there's a Corvette there. I didn't have a flying car. I just made a Corvette appear up on stage in front of a live audience with, with, with uh, actually the Drill Team Dance Girls. So that is what I do. I, I teleport. I do demonstrations of teleportation. I also do the demonstration of, of metamorphosis, which is being able to transform myself in front of uh, uh, other people, like transform myself physically. This is me at the Emmy Awards, the 44th annual Los Angeles area Emmy Awards in 1992. It was a monumental time because the Rodney King riots just hit and all these people that were in the audience were all the newscasters and all the people that were covering that. This is the LA Emmy Awards, okay? And it was a very unfortunate time at the time, uh, uh, at, at the time of what had happened, okay? Just on a social level, race level, everything, okay? So what I had done in front of the live audience is I actually metamorphosized myself and I turned myself into the host of the show. And then he continues to do the host of the show, the Emmy Awards. That's what I do. If you want to watch it, watch the video, okay? All right. That's that one. Final scene. Uh, it's it's how the Harry Potter series ends, I guess. I actually command a Japanese army with over 180 uh, performers right there. And that's shooting out. We're shooting out streamers that are going right into the audience. Uh, to the to, to audience of 8,000 people. Standing ovation. Wonderful. Pretty identical to the last scene of Harry Potter. How they, how they eventually defeat... Lord Baltimore. That's how I ended up defeating, uh, how I ended up defeating uh, David Copperfield. I did this performance of the 180 backup dancers versus him by himself. He flew on stage by himself. Nothing wrong with that. It's a phenomenal illusion. And that's what I did. Okay. So that's where I'm at with that. That's an additional five. Okay. An additional five. So now let's just total that up. Look at that right there. We are talking about literally 30 things that match up. 30. Okay? So this is the time where I'd like to really challenge many of you out there. All you skeptical people. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to challenge many of the people out there that are like have a religious belief to Harry Potter or J.K. Rowling as being the messiah or some god or how dare you all this stuff i, I want to talk to the logical people out there okay that are that are going to look at this and kind of uh, i'm going to kind of poke fun at you a little bit and tell you things uh that are all true okay so so i want to make sure well, well well you decide you decide if it's all true or not but i'm going to tell you things to kind of poke at you and make you jog your mind and really see if this is something that you can outwit okay if anything all right so let's take a look okay so this is the question that i will be asking okay so keep keep this in mind you've got some information now and i haven't asked this question yet so when it comes time i'm going to have you put in the answer your answer of which one do you think it is okay why does the boy wizard stories match is it because it's a lie Right? Copying Rawling story. Magicians are not wizards. Coincidence are based on two events. Now, let's just talk about what this virtually means. If the stories really do match, what does that mean? Does that mean 
that I, I, Ken Hayashi, the samurai wizard, has something to do with this story of Harry Potter. Hmm. Well, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Okay, let's take a look at what, who, what, what, that, what that actually means, the industry. Harry Potter, okay, has sold over fi 500 million books worldwide, worldwide, translated into 73 different languages. The last four books consecutively set records as the fastest selling books in history. It is the highest grossing film series of all time, and it's a 25 billion dollar industry one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time and now they're coming up with this new uh, to continue on with the success fantastic beasts and where to find them okay so why does the story match this is for you now to finally type in your answer in the comment section so i'm not going to pause the video right now I want, i'm going to stay on hold because you've had plenty of time for you to think and go ahead and type in your answer Okay, you don't have, I'm just going to stay here right now. If you just typed it in, we're just going to continue talking. So it's real simple. You write question two, write Q2 or question two. That's fine. Q2. And is it A and then lie? That means it's just a lie. I've been lying to you, right? Someone's lying to you, right? B, C, D, D, it's a coincidence. E, it's based on true events, Okay. Be accountable for your answer. Write it down. And even if you don't want to, please, for your sake, it would just make it more fun. I'm going to ask you more questions, okay? And we can see where you're set at, all right? All right, hopefully you've done that by now. I'm going to continue on, so let's just move on, all right? So the next thing is this. That's impossible. Number one, Harry Potter is English. You already put down your answer, so you can't change your answer now, all right? I'm going to ask you other questions. That's impossible. Harry Potter's English and Ken Hayashi's Japanese. Right? That's right. So so that number 1, it is impossible, right? I mean, come on. Hollywood would never never lie to you. Right? They would never take a Japanese character, iconic person and hire like a a white person or you know like have a someone else that's caucasian doing that would never do that have you ever heard of dragon ball dragon ball it's it's actually he dragon ball goku son goku is the the most famous iconic japanese character cartoon anime in history it has gone all over the entire world as the most iconic japanese hero like the Superman of America, right? Okay. Of course, they hire an, an obvious guy that is Japanese to play that character. The movie flopped. I'm sure darn glad it did. Okay, because it was an embarrassment. It's embarrassment. And you know what? Hollywood net would never do something like that again, right? Uh, well, actually, this is uh, Ghost in the Shell. Have you heard of it? Ghost in the Shell. It's an anime series back in the mid-90s that came out. It was a huge success, worldwide sensation. People had not seen that type of animation before. It was worldwide success, okay, about this android robot, okay? Japanese anime series. Ma started making movies, uh, a series, right? It's c continued on TV series, stuff like that. Of course... You know, of course, it's a Japanese movie. They're going to hire a, a perfect Japanese uh, actress to play that role. Huh. Well, she looks Japanese, I guess, enough. They just throw a you know, wig on her and Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, anyways, that's, you know, so anyways, that's what that's like. So they would never hire a, <laughs> I mean, a white guy to play me. They would never do that, right? I mean, come on. There's no movies out there that would ever do something. Hollywood would never lie to you and place a Caucasian actor to play a Japanese story or role. Okay? If you see Hachi, Hachi is the most beloved story about a dog uh, that waited by a train station for his owner for years. And it was they made a statue about him, everything like that. They do put a nod to the real story, but obviously they hired a 
Caucasian actor to play the role of the professor that took care of this Akita dog. Lion King. What? Are you kidding me? Lion King? Disney? No! No, no, no. That would he, They would never do that. That's Disney. Disney to this day literally denies that they've ever heard of the story of Kimba. And if you look that up, Google that one, Kimba versus Simba, and you'll find out the real story. It literally is screen by screen. Disney took that story, the creator of Astro Boy, creating Kimba, and made a story called Simba. Okay, it's it's scene by scene. All right, so yeah, uh, yeah, Hollywood would never lie to you. So so let's just let's move on. Okay, so. I'm going to give you a couple of uh, my answers to some of these uh, some of these possibilities. The first one was a lie. Okay, is it possible that I'm just someone's lying to you? I'm lying to you, right? I'm, I'm lying to you. So that, of course, this whole thing could I, I could have just been kidding about this whole thing. This is just a scam, and my new scam is that I'm just going to go out and try to scam the world into believing that I'm Harry Potter. Right. And, and I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, whatever. But that, you know, that that I'm putting my reputation on the line here. And that's a, it's, a, it's a long secret that maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. And not told people. But however, I have people that could testify to this actually happen, you know, who do I have testifying? I've got, I've got an executive producer of the Emmy Awards. I've got an Emmy Award-winning actress, actress, uh, Sarah Joy Brown, which I actually ended up going to prom with, which is cool. Uh, I've got a ten-time uh, award-winning show producer over to the bottom left, right there. She is the number one show producer in the world by Miss Dance Drill Team USA, having performances of 120 to 180 people, worked, uh, choreographed, and worked on the Olympics as well as star-studded shows. Okay, and that's an interview of her not collaborating, just confirming that this all happened. Literally happened. You check out that video. Again, uh, it's, it'll be under Jan Crawford. I didn't put up the link right there, but Jan Crawford interview. Over to the bottom right, you see me actually interviewing and talking with producer director and choreographer that toured with Michael Jackson this is the kid I actually ended up going to high school with and he actually was a one of the Michael Jackson's backup dancer in remember the time while in high school senior in high school and we're just talking and confirming that everything that I have been saying has been true and I'm I'm not kidding around I wasn't like ah I'm just kidding you know stuff like that I'm not doing that okay so let's take a look at uh, you know, someone that could possibly never, ever lie to you. Ever. Okay? Now, this is J.K. Rowling, obviously uh, the hero, the queen of the wizarding world of Harry Potter, right? As we say. Now, it says on here, if you check it out on uh, Wikipedia, you'll see that anticipating the target audience of young boys might not want to read a book written by a woman, her publisher, and uh, asked that she could use two initials rather than her full name. As she had no middle name, she chose K for Kathleen as the second initial of her pen name. Okay, what does that mean? Well, number one, those are not her initials. She does not have a middle name. Okay, her middle name is not Kathleen. She does not have a middle name, so JK is not really her name. Okay? And she actually says on here, oh, she's going to blame it on the publisher. Whatever the case is, she actually approved this, whatever, however they decided to print millions of books on, that she was going trying to deceive the public in believing she was a male author. Okay? That's fact here. She was deceiving the public to make the public believe she was a male author. And that is not even her name. Okay? Of course, you know, she would never lie to you but she just did it right there that's not a big deal and and, the, and she's a fictional writer that's okay of course Miriam's Webster what it means is something that is told and written that is not fact a made-up story works of literature that is not true stories well that's okay because she is a fictional writer and she wouldn't do that again right of course she also uses another name as well as many of you may or may not know she goes under her name Robert 
Gail Braith. Gail Braith. Okay? Robert Gail Braith. So it looks like, or you could just come to this conclusion that she just continues to be a fictional writer. I mean, it's a fake story using a fake name more than once, okay, and writing this thing. So the, the people to the left is who I have to confirm my story. I mean, this all could be a lie, absolutely. But I also have an executive producer of the Emmy Awards, the, uh, the <laughs> award, uh, the, a, a 10 time award winning show producer that worked on the Olympics. Uh, L the people that I worked with, including the LA Rams cheerleading, all the people that are, were in my shows uh, demonstrating magic, ESPN, TV, newspapers, and I got to work with the number one teenage female magician in history of the world and has not been beaten to this day. Now, her story, J.K. Rowling's story, is that she was inspired to write the Hermione character based on herself. Really? I did not know that J.K. Rowling was a wizard or a magician. And that she actually attended a school of magic or beaten the world's greatest wizard in the world. I, like, I, I didn't know she knew that per that she was her. She also has the story that she actually got inspired for the characters in her book, movie, whatever, of the people that were local around her, okay? All the supportive people. Now, she was a single mother, and then I've been raised by a single mother. It's okay, okay? A homeless one. She was, you know, a homeless single mother. Nothing wrong with that. But she is a fiction writer, a fake writer, a, a, a fiction name, a fake name okay and she wouldn't do this type of scam okay I and mean, it's scam people right anyway so she does have a new book though a new scam uh, scamand uh actually the name of her new book is actually called newt scamander not, not a new scam or anything like that it's a new it's a it's a new story okay which is just coming out okay you know a lot of writers they kind of have a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> you know, when they're doing their little writing thing, they kind of want to see if you catch the little Easter eggs in there. But in order for me to lie, I'd have to get all these people in on it. I'd have to Photoshop all these things. I mean, all these videos, you can go check them out yourself. But that is on the section about, well, hmm, why does the boy wizard story match? Well, it's obviously a lie. Someone's lying to you. I didn't say who, but if you saw this person to the right and person to the left, you're in a courtroom. Let's look at kind of like the reputation of what's going on here. And by the way, over to the left, and that is all the people that testified to all this when I was doing it back in 1992, before 97. Okay, so that's on that one. Okay, so let's move on. So. That's on A. Let's take a look at this. Why does the boy story match? So I'm going to go through each one of this so you, you can just understand and think of this logically. I don't know which was your answer, but we're going to go through that. Well, heck, all I'm doing is copying J.K. Rowling's story. I mean, she's a billionaire. I'm just a, oh, gosh, I'm a, I'm a leech. I have to be just leeching off the system. I'm just changing my story and trying to ride on the coattails of her success, obviously right so let's take a look at possibly if that is a not possibility so let's just go with the first one who likes math did i lose any of you i probably did <laughs> did i lose some of you i hopefully did oh my gosh math you hate math okay some of you do like math i like math because math is very logical so i'm going to ask you a very simple math question please stick along uh hang around here if you've already checked out you checked out nope this guy's bull bs lying to us whatever just turn off, okay? But I'm going to go through everything, and I promise you, by the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you what is the real answer, okay? And it may not be the answer you think it is, all right? So who likes math? Now, math, I'm going to ask you a math question. You don't have to actually type this in, but I want you to put a mental note of which is the correct answer, all right? Question one, which number comes before the other number? Ready? 
A or B. Which number comes before the other number? Hmm. A or B. Simple question. It's not a trick question. All right. Let's do that again. Which number comes before the other number? Hopefully you've been paying attention so you know what I'm referencing. 1992 versus 1997. Why am I saying that? Because I already said this before. This is my life from 1983 to 1992. She published her book from 97 to 2007. Okay? Five years after my life, this book gets published. All right. Now, and then if you look, number one, it's documented. 1984, four, three, sorry, 1983, my father and my, par my parents were both written up in the Smithsonian for creating... The, they, they, they were magicians. <laughs> they were magicians. And they've been written up in the Smithsonian. You can look this up. Go ahead. Disco Blasting Robot Waiters of 1980 Pasadena. Smithsonian. Look it up. Google it. All right? That's my father there with these robot waiters. That's a whole other story. I'll talk about that stuff later. Okay? They were magicians. And then in 1992, I was doing the 44th Annual Los Angeles Emmy Awards, other stuff as well. That's just me with Denise. Uh, with the executive producer of the L Emmy Awards that year, Charles Lang. Okay, you see us holding up a little brochure, pamphlet. We're out there in the lobby. That's us. That's when my story ends. Five years later, Harry Potter comes out. Okay, let's take a look over there. It says Philosopher's Stone, 1997, over to the right. Finished book. Uh, finished the book in 2007. So again, which story? <laughs> right. That's in 2007. You understand basic math, right? It's impossible for someone to copy someone else's story that happens in the future. Unless, you know, I have a time machine or something like that. All right. So let's just go with that. All right. So, uh, so which set of numbers, uh, years come before the other set of years, right? It's impossible that one year is before the other. I'm A. Rawling is B. That's it. All right. So that's it on that one. Uh, the cop, uh, I'm co basically copying Rawling's story or her, her, her success. Okay. That's for those people that answered that one. All right. Next one. Why does the, going back to this question here, number C, magicians are not wizards, right? I mean, come on. That's great. Maybe the story does match. But you know what? After all, you're just a freaking magician. Right? You're doing these, pulling rabbits out of hats. That's, that's not wizarding. That's not what you see in Harry Potter there, with all the magic that happens there and all the fantastic adventures that Harry Potter goes through. That, you, you're, you're like, a, like a trickster. You do tricks, you know, magic tricks. Well, let me address that one. So those of you that answered C, magicians are not wizards. Right? First things first, I did study at the Academy of Magical Arts. I can go into a whole story of what we studied there, but I'm not going to do it on today's video. Okay. But are you going to tell me what I studied at the Academy of Magical Arts? Are you going to tell me what I studied there? What we studied there? Why don't you tell me what I studied at Oxford? How about this? Why don't you tell me what I studied when I got a black belt? Why are you telling me what I studied there? You didn't go to that school. I did. And some of the stuff that we studied there, I am definitely not going to reveal. It's very too controversial. Was it a school of witchcraft and wizardry? <laughs> you, should, you should find out. I'll, I'll let, why don't you let me tell you what we studied there? All right? Because I actually did go to that school. All right. So... But if you're a wizard, you're going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys must have been doing coin tricks there, right? That's what you're doing. Yeah, we, yeah some people did study coin tricks. That's fine. That's not what I studied. Okay. But the question is, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> if you're really a wizard, if you're really a wizard, you could do so much more than doing some silly magic tricks. Well, think about this. I'm in high school. And if you're, if, think about when you were back in high school or if you're in high school now or you're about to go to high school. Think about that. Question number three. If you really were a wizard, not today,
But when you were in high school, or when you're going to go to high school, if you really were a wizard, what would you want to do? Okay, what would you do if you really were a wizard in high school? You had the power of a wizard. Would you be A, popular? B, you win at sports or awards? Would you go out with the hottest girls? <laughs> For all you guys out there. Any girls out there saying, okay, well, I'd go out with the hottest guys. Whatever. Okay. Participate in all the fun activities. Hey, some of you say, hey, I'd like to win the lottery and just sit on the beach all day. Whatever the case is, go ahead or, or F, other. You have something else. Hey, I'd win this decathlon or whatever the case is. This is your time to have some fun with this. Go ahead and answer that and don't take too long. You're not writing a whole paragraph here. Question number three, this is your time to go ahead and answer that question right now because I'm going to ask you a question right afterwards. Okay. What would you do if you really were a wizard and you were in high school but no one knew? What would you do? Would it be A, B, C, D, E, or F? And go ahead and write that down. Q3. And then write A, popular, if that's what you wanted to do. Or B, win at sports or win at football or win at whatever you wanted to do. Okay. Take a second. And seriously, we're talking five seconds here. Go ahead. Type it in. You don't have to hit pause. If you want to, hit pause. If I keep talking, hit pause, whatever. Pause now. Type it in. should take you five seconds and come right back. Scroll down. Yeah, if you haven't signed in, you have to sign in now. This is question number three. All right. You guys got it? Perfect. Fantastic. Okay. Now, next one. So the thing was, when I was in high school, I had another life besides being a what do you call quote unquote magician okay quote unquote magician we're still talking about magicians are not wizards now I want to ask you this question question number four how did I do this okay or how did I do that this is what I did besides going to the Academy of Magical Arts I had a little side life side life okay and this video uh, which is on uh, who is Hayashi, which you'll check it out. This is what happened in 1992. I was doing this simultaneously while I beat David Copperfield. Simultaneously, I had actually won Best Actor Award. Now, I am not an actor. I'm not an actor, all right? Uh, there's a reason for that because you give me lines I, I'm really fumble up lines I'm not good at re memorizing stuff so anyways I'm not an actor but I happen to win best actor award not an ordinary high school but actually LOXA Los Angeles County High School for the Arts there's a documentary on that high school if any of you ever seen fame have any of you ever seen fame fame from the 1970s they made a remake uh, a couple years back fame as well as Fame High, which is the documentary. Okay, it's the most competitive dramatic arts high school in the world in Los Angeles. There's 30,000 kids that apply for that school every year. They only let in 130 kids. I went to that high school. At that school, I won Best Actor Award. I am not an actor, but I won. It was an honor. I also won... Now, I became a national dance champion at another high school. At just not a high school, I, I actually became a na national dance champion at Miss Dance Drill Team USA. Simultaneously. I also wrote an off-Broadway play produced in New York. I think I shared some of that with you. I was a presenter at the Emmy Awards. I presented at the Emmy Awards. Okay, I presented the hosts. I also, there was an off-Broadway play that was written about my life that was produced in New York. Uh, I also was a producer and director of two Emmy Award shows, meaning I, uh, I was a segment, sorry, segment producer and director of the opening segment of Emmy Award shows, two of them. I also led a football team to the national championships and won. And I simultaneously led a cheerleading team to the national championships and won. Ever see Bring It On? Okay, same thing. 
Now the question is, how did I do that? This is completely true. Please take, check out the video, which has uh, video footage. It's got pictures on there. It's called Who is Hayashi? Okay, on YouTube, on my channel. I did all these things. Now, how did I do that? Question number four, was it because I was lucky? Was it because I'm stupid or crazy? Was it because I am talented? Was it because I am smart? Or was it because I'm a wizard? Go ahead and put that answer down now. So go ahead and stop the video or I'll stay on. Just It should only take you a second. So question four, Q4, go down to the comment section now. I'll stay on here while you do this. It should only take you 10 seconds. And put in your answer. I'm going to tell you my answer later by the end of the video. Okay, you should be done by now. Hopefully you're done. Let's move on. If not, pause it for a second and then just type it in and move on. Okay, it's one of those four answers. Okay, I'm sorry, five answers. One, two, yeah, five answers. Now, before your guard goes up, I want you to understand this. By the way, who is the only person that really knows the answer to that question? It's me. It's not you. I don't, it doesn't really matter what you think. It really doesn't. Because on that answer right there, the only person that knows that answer is me. Okay? So I'm going to tell you the answer at the end of the video. That's question number four. Let's move on. And then, by, by the way, during this thing, that's where I'm doing the interview with Courtney Miller there. Okay, Courtney Miller is the producer, director, choreographer. He toured with Michael Jackson. I went to school with him actually at Loxa. He was the number one kid in Loxa. And that's in that video. It's a two and a half hour video. Okay, uh, but the last video is only probably about 30 minutes where I'm explaining how I was able to do all those things. It's one of these answers. And I explain how I did that. All right, definitely check that out. Now, Here's the other thing that whatever your answer is right now, whatever your answer is, I'm sure you wrote that down. Whatever your answer is, here is a answer. I'm going to tell you this. There, uh, in the video, I explained this. The definition of a wizard, this is the definition of a wizard, is this. According to Miriam's dictionary, uh, it says this. Miriam Webster dictionary it says, a wizard is a person who practices magic, magician, or a sorcerer. Did I practice magic? Yes, I was a magician. Okay, so number one, I qualify. A, I qualify. That's it. Done. But there's another, another answer there. A wizard is also, if you look at that, a wizard is also a wise man. Now, if I ended up being accepted into Oxford, I'm, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here, okay, but if I got at Oxford, would I be considered maybe wise? I don't know. Okay. Possibly. All right. I know it may be an opinion, but a kid that goes to Oxford may be pretty smart. I don't know. The last one is this. A, a whiz is a, uh, also whiz with a person of amazing skill or accomplishment. Such as a computer, a, 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 a wizard at computer science or chemistry. Term used such as a computer whiz. So, would that be considered a computer, I mean, not a computer whiz, but a whiz? Well, yes. So whether you like it or not, okay, and I'm kind of alluding to the answer here. By definition, I am actually a wizard. By definition, I'm a d wizard. So you're right. Magicians are not wizards because what it is is <laughs> magicians do card tricks. I don't know if you've ever met a magician before, a zany, I'm going to just kind of paint a picture here. Typically, there's like some zany, kind of socially awkward, kind of different kind of a person there. They're, they're, they're maybe your uncle or somebody that does a little cute little card trick or pull a rabbit out of a hat or a scarf like that at a birthday party. Or some of the characters that you even see at Magic Castle. Okay? They're a little, little odd. All right? And you can see plenty of... <laughs> 
plenty of uh, documentaries on how magicians really are. They think differently, but you know they're the ones that are doing little card tricks, coin tricks, stuff like that, silly little things like that. I don't do card tricks. I don't do card tricks. All this right there has nothing to do with me doing a card trick or a coin trick or pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Does that make sense to you? Someone that wins Best Actor Award, someone that becomes a national dance champion, somebody that writes an off broadway with a play. Do you think a kid that does card tricks leads a football team to the national championships and win? How do you think I did that? Well, the answer I'll give at the very end. By definition, I'm a wizard. By definition. But I'll tell you the real answer at the very end of this video. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's not the real answer. I'll tell you at the end, okay? All right. So magicians are not wizards. And you know what? Look at that right there. That's, that's like some of my assistants. You see me right there in the middle? That's my small group of assistants, okay, men and women, as my assistants, all right? Kid that does card tricks usually probably gets, like, thrown in a locker room or something, you know, <laughs> thrown into the lockers. You know, that's, that's what that kid gets, not me. I'm a wizard. By definition, I am. All right, so let's move on. All right, magicians are not wizards. I'm not a magician. I'm not a magician. All right, move on. All right, so last one. It's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Very possible. It could very well be a coincidence. Now, before we do that, I'd like to kind of go over the, the pop, uh, another question to you. I'm going to give you a second chance. And the reason I'm not giving you a second chance is just because a second chance. You've already answered the question once. But it's almost like playing poker. When you play poker, I don't know if any of you guys play poker. But when you play poker, you get a set of cards. Depends on what kind of poker game you're playing. And you have the option, sometimes not text home, but you have the option to look at the cards and go, mm, do I want to keep these cards or I'm going to give the cards away and take another set of cards. Okay, so if you play poker, you understand how that game works. So I'm going to give you another option for you to answer again. Okay, so this is question number five. Answer this again. It's your second chance to answer. Now, if you want to stick with your answer, that's okay. Answer it again. So if your first answer was, hey, you know what? You're lying. It's a lie. Boom. It's a lie. That was question A. Uh, number two, right, would be Q2 lie, a lie. And then if you're saying, you know what? After I've heard all this, it's still a lie. Fine. Your Q5 is A again. Okay, that means you stuck with your answer. That's okay. Now, if you want to change your answer, you have the option to change your answer, just like you're playing poker. It's not a big deal. You take your cards, you throw them away, says, you know what, I'm going to take another set of cards. That's okay. So at this point, right now, go ahead and answer again. I'm going to go over the last two. Okay? Second chance. Why does the Boy Wizard story match? Is it A, B, C, D, or a, uh, E? Go ahead. Again, I'm going to give you like five seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Go ahead and write that answer down. I'm not, don't pause the video. Just type it in. You should be already used to it. Q5, question five, put in your answer. Okay. And don't let other people's answer deter you. Just write your answer down. Just your, and don't write a paragraph of what you think yet. You can write comments later. Flame me afterwards later. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Great. Hopefully you've done that. All right. So the second time you, you've answered that question, it's either I'm a lie, I'm copying Rowling's story, you're sticking with to it, that's my story, I'm sticking to it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> magicians are not wizards, coincidence based on true events. All right, so let's move on. So uh, now the, the other question, now before I answer the coincidence thing, how is it possible that Rowling could have possibly known of the samurai wizard? That's all fine, Ken, that's fine, but you know what? There's no way she could have known about you. Single mother out in, you know, the UK. There's no way. Well, number one, think about this. Let's say you're writing a story about football. And this is the, one of the videos I have. Let's say you're writing a story about football, right? An inspirational story about football players and tackling the struggles it gets through to, in order to become a, a great high school football team. Wouldn't it make sense to at least go and check out a, 
a high school football game or, you know, find out who won football that year. Would it, wouldn't it make sense? Right? Right? If you're writing a, a, a book about uh, the, uh, even surfers, let's say the kid surfer, shouldn't you at least do some research? I mean, it would make sense, right? Okay. So let's say you're writing a story about, you know, this little kid that goes to a school of, of wizardry or school of magic. Shouldn't you find out if there really is a school of magic, a world famous school of magic? That's world recognized. Everyone around the world wants to go to. Okay. In, inside of a castle that goes through all these adventures. I mean, shouldn't you find that out? Well, I would think so. I mean, I would do it if I was writing a book about anything. Do some research. Okay. So while, while that was going on, I'm at the academy. Well, in the world of magic, I am myself. Not only was I doing the other stuff, I was actually starring at the magic castle. The world famous magic castle. Hogwarts Castle, whatever you call it. I'm starring there, closing the show in the Palace of Mystery. Okay, at the same time, I'm the number one student of the junior student at the Academy of Magical Arts. So this is in the world of magic. I also beat, as I said before, I beat David Coffrey, which is known as the most commercially successful magician in history, according to Forbes magazine. So if you're studying about the world of magic, it would make sense that you should at least know something, something about the world of magic. And that's where I stood as a samurai wizard. I'm starring at the Academy of Magical Arts. Well, how about this? Also at the same time in Japan. While I was in Japan, I actually was filming shows here and I was actually starring on NHK television specials and several television specials as the samurai wizard. Okay, with all my assistants, my dancers, my performers, because I was the Japanese American samurai, magician's wizard on these magic specials whenever they filmed it here, going, okay, and of course, I finished the show. I'm a representative of their country of Japan. So I was very famous all throughout the I was the only Famous magician wizard in Japan. It was me and there was another uh, woman, very famous. She wasn't a kid though. It was her name, Princess Tanko. Okay, it was me and her. And I'm a 17. That's what I was doing. Okay. Uh, now in the United States, that's great. That's 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 Japan. How about the United States? Well, in the United States, of course, you are as I already explained. I'm doing the Emmy Awards. I'm not not just like a you know. The, just not just like in the middle of the show. I'm like, I opened the Emmy Awards. How about that? I'm opening the Emmy Awards. That's right there at the 44th annual Los Angeles Emmy Awards. I was the presenter. Uh, I also did the second Emmy Awards show right there with with uh, Tommy uh, Tommy Davidson uh, and a Rams cheerleader, like a fly girl kind of thing. I made him appear uh, at the 44th annual Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards back in 1992. 1992. Uh, there was an obviously I told you there's an off-Broadway play that was written about my high school life produced in New York by the Foundation Dra Dramatist Guild. They hired a great actor to play me, Daniel. Not Radcliffe. Not, they didn't hire Daniel Radcliffe. They hired Daniel Day Kim. He wasn't a known actor at the time. I don't know if you know him today, but he is actually a star of a show called Hawaii Five O. They casted him to play my character in New York, off-Broadway. Okay, this is the United States. Well, <laughs> that's Broadway. That's the Emmys. I mean, come on. That doesn't mean everyone in the country knows you. Well, I was also working for the First Lady <laughs> at the time. Okay? I was working for the First Lady of the Reagan administration, Nancy Reagan, wonderful lady. Okay? Uh, she had a program called the Nancy Reagan After School Program, which was... Uh, which was getting young minds to not go into the bad influences uh, you know, peer pressure, drugs, alcohol, right? Uh, activities that are not you know, good for young children, right? And they had me as the spokesperson. <laughs> so this was being broadcast throughout the entire country. All students during the 1990s, okay? Kids, grade school kids were being, this was being played in their classrooms, in every classroom throughout the country. And I was a spokesperson. That's me with my, I had blue hair then. It was kind of dark blue. You can't tell as much, but I had dark blue hair then as well. Ken Hayashi. Okay. 
They're thinking, wait a minute, that's fine. Ken, that's the United States. That's Japan. And you know what? Even though she wrote a book about magic, she just did not know what was going on in the world of magic, the number one wizard, you know, the, the school of magic in the world. She didn't know anything about that. She lives in the United Kingdom. Come on. Absolutely not. That has nothing to do with what's going on in her little community. Now, of course, you know, as we already talked about magazines, articles, newspapers, television. We've already gone through all that stuff. You know, I got recognized by the Emmy Awards as the youngest producer ever, okay, to be working on the Emmy Awards, two of them. That's right there in front of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. So these are the people that I have. But you know what? In the UK, that does not happen. I mean, <laughs> that's, the, that's the United States. That has nothing to do with us. Except this. Do you remember where I went to school? Recall where I went to school. I said that at the very beginning of this presentation. Where did I go to school? That's right. I went to Oxford. The school that J.K. Rowling wished she always dreamt she would always be accepted into, but her application was denied. She did not go to Oxford. Right? That story is well known. She did not get accepted into Oxford. I went there. I was... I was hanging out with the best and brightest minds of all England. Of course, the people at Cambridge probably don't, you know, will argue against that. Whatever. Oxford, Cambridge, whatever. I'm, that's what I did. And every night I'd go out and hang out with all the Oxford friends of mine. Different pub every night. Hang out with all these guys. And some ladies too. Right? And just talk. And experience life. And also, I was telling them about my adventures back in the States. Well, that's just the people at Oxford that they wouldn't have known about you. Well, actually, the, the funny thing was, if you have you ever had a Guinness? Anybody on uh, listening to this have ever had a Guinness? You know what a Guinness is? Guinness is a, uh, of course, there's Guinness World Record, all that stuff. They, they have a beautiful drink. It's called an, uh, a Murphy. I'm sorry, a, a Guinness Stout. Guinness Stout, my favorite drink at the time. Uh, Guinness Stout very popular it's got a very dark rich chocolate kind of beer stout with a nice thick uh like head that goes on top and that's the drink that i would drink all the time at every pub so the murphy's corporation which is the main competitor to guinness thought that that was cool that every time i go into a pub you know everyone looks at me like what the heck is a samurai walking into a pub you know, like, imagine the looks on their faces. Well, they thought, hey, why don't we shoot a commercial of you doing that, Ken? And I said, sure, that's fine. So I flew out to Ireland. They shot a commercial with me drinking an Irish stout, the Murphy's Irish stout, ordering a Murphy's going, Murphy's. You know, if you check that video out, it's under Murphy's Samurai Wizard. Again, the link will be down there. And it was a huge sensation throughout the entire country. It was being played throughout the UK, throughout Ireland, Scotland, and everywhere where Murphy's was being uh, sold onto the market, it was being blasted out there. Billboards were made. It was huge campaigns and magazines. People were, were, were doing that, like going Murphy's and ordering it that way that I did it. It's a kind of wizarding move. And I pick up the, the, the bottle and I drink it. You can watch the video, see how I do it. That was being blasted out all the time throughout the United Kingdom before her book was published. Just FYI. All right. So it's almost like today, if you think about the most interesting man in the world, right? It's like, well, it's a bizarre commercial, right? The most interesting man in the world. It's like saying, oh, I've never seen that commercial. Really? You've never seen that commercial? That's ridiculous. It's almost like back in the 80s, there was a commercial that was so iconic. Where's the beef? You know, with a, a Wendy's commercial. Some of you probably, it's way too old for you to even understand what I'm talking about. But there, was, there are iconic commercials that come out that when they do come out, the entire country knows about it. They quote it. All right. So in the United Kingdom, I'm being blasted out of Murphy's commercial. And you know what? Just to even top it off with a little cherry right on top of there. Ghost in the Shell was actually very popular at the time. I was like, what are you talking about now? Ghost in the Shell? I thought we were done with that with Scarlett Johansson. doesn't matter. Ghost in the Shell uh, had a very popular uh, anime series that just came out. Huge sensation. Everyone was like going, that's fantastic. They decided to make an anime adaptation of me and that commercial starring in that commercial doing the same thing 
And that was being played throughout the United Kingdom consistently, constantly, back in 20 plus years ago. So let's take a look at that. Again, most interesting wizard in the world. Go check it out. Watch the actual commercial. You can go see that. Let's take a look. So I am the samurai wizard in the world of magic. I am the most famous samurai wizard in Japan. All of Japan. I am the most famous samurai wizard in the United, King, uh, United States. And I'm the most famous samurai wizard in the United Kingdom. How could you not know who I was? Especially if you're going to write a story about a kid wizard. Hmm. Kind of interesting. All right. So that was your second chance. You wrote that answer down. Okay. Now, the coincidence. Oh, my gosh. We still have to go on the coincidence thing. Okay. So the answer number two or number five. I'm going to go with the coincidence angle. I know some of you thought, you know what? That's all fine and dandy. Maybe she found out about you. Maybe blah, 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 that it's a lie, all that stuff. But you know what? It's just a coincidence. Come on, Ken. It is a coincidence. It's not based on your story. She's an, a, such an inspirational writer. She, she wrote this from her imagination. It's just a coincidence, and you're trying to take credit for her work. Fine. Let's, who likes math? I think I asked that question earlier. Some of you already checked out. Well, if you already checked out then, you're really going to check out now. But some of you are into math, so I'd like to address all you logical thinkers out there. Okay? Logical thinkers. All right? Rather than saying, oh, that building is big, you can say, hey, that building has 80 stories. That's a logical thinking. 80 stories is bigger than 60 stories. It's logical thinking. So, let's just take the odds of winning the lottery. All right? The odds of winning the lottery, uh, and we're in California here, so California lottery, Mega Millions. I just grabbed one of those and just said, okay, Mega Millions lottery has 70 possibilities, meaning 70 different numbers that you can pick. Okay? If you were to pick five out of five correct numbers, you would become a millionaire. That's right. But what are the odds of hitting five out of five numbers. This should be simple, simple enough, right? Well, that actually calculates out to 12,607,306 to one to hit all five out of five numbers. Now, isn't that amazing that I calculated that out? Actually, no, not really because it's it's on the back of a ticket. Every, every ticket has one, so sorry. Okay, all right, all right, let's move on here. <laughs> It would be neat if I did calculate that out. But here's the other question. The other question is, now pay, please pay attention. Please pay attention now. What if there were 30 key components that matched up? What if 30 key components happened to match up? What would that mean? Hmm. Now, if you put that all on the same ticket, actually, the, the, the odds get less. So it's actually easier to get 30 on a single ticket than, 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 than to break them up into several tickets. So if you were to break them up into six separate tickets, meaning that you were to get five matches on six separate tickets, do you get that? 30 tickets, I mean 30 numbers that matched up, 30 random numbers that matched up, okay? 30 random numbers that matched up. That means, what would that mean, okay? That means, what are the odds? The odds would be the probability of winning six times, getting five numbers correct, but not the mega ball, which is you can order, you can have a six number. Then the answer is actually uh, one under twelve million six hundred seven thousand six hundred and three hundred and six to the power of six, or four. Tredecillion to one. Four tredecillion to one. That's four and 42 zeros. Now, I had this actually calculated by Professor Ann Siswanto. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, it's just a coincidence. It goes, okay, that's fine. Now, Professor Ann Siswanto, which I take Zumba class with, uh, she actually has her undergraduate from UCLA in mathematics. She's got her master's 
in mathematics and statistics at UCLA, and she also has her doctorate at UCLA and a current college professor, mathematician college professor. She helped me calculate that out. Not help me, she just gave me the, the calculations for me. Okay? If 30 out of 30 things match up, and these are not random things, we are talking about key components. Key components. Remember that story I said about this? I go, hey, listen, this, this, this was a fictional writer saying, hey, I, I wrote this great fi fictional inspirational story about a bodybuilder that becomes an actor that becomes a governor of a land. Okay, great. Who's that story about? Come on, you know who that person's about, obviously. Okay, three out of three. It's obviously a person that you wrote down on answer number one. Question number one. Well, what if there was a person that says, listen, I wrote this fantastic fictional story about a, a kid. He has parents that are wizards, and he goes to school of wizardry, and then eventually beats the world's greatest wizard in the world as a boy wizard. That's a great story. Well, I wonder who's that story about. That's only three. <laughs> okay? What happens if there's not three, but ten? How about if there's not 10, but there's actually 30? And we're not talking about random, random things here, okay? We're not, like my parents, they could have been anybody. They could have been firemen. They could have been a doctor, a, a gardener, a, an attorney, a, you know, whatever, okay? They could have been anybody, but they are magicians. The year I went to that school, 1990, out of all the years, 1990, it's the same year, the owl, okay? All the things in your, the school I went, literally, Oxford University, literally, like, come on, seriously, seriously, it's Oxford, you, you just filmed it right at Oxford. The name of the headmaster, Roldor versus Dumbledore, I mean, it is key components, 30 out of 30 matches, identical matches. There are more than 70 different possibilities on each. I could have gone to any school in the world. Oxford. Shoot, if I got in Oxford, I could have gone to any school in the United States, but I happen to go to school in the United Kingdom. That's over a thousand different possibilities, not 70,000 different possibilities. Does that make sense? So actually the number is astronomically even higher than four tradicillion to one. All right? So why does the boy stories match? Well, some of you said it's a coincidence. Okay. Yeah, it's a possibility. I wouldn't ever give you a hundred bucks to go to Vegas, though. That's uh -huh. just my thing. I, I don't want to put you, you know, throw you under the bus there, but you're really going for a long shot. Uh, that's not my thinking. Okay. All right. Let's move on. All right. So uh, we got to come to an end here, uh, and I'm wrapping this up. Last one is it is based on a true event. Now, before I get into that, uh, based on true events, okay, uh, Here's my answer to that. I am Iron Man. I'm sorry, not Iron Man. I'm sorry. I am Harry Potter. That's right. I am Harry Potter. The reality is there's just this many things that match up. Okay? And even if many of you are on this video at this point going, this guy's joking, blah, blah, blah. Okay, rewatch re the video. Daniel Radcliffe... If you're going to say, well, Daniel Radcliffe's the real Harry Potter, just understand, he did none of those things. He's an actor. He reads lines. He, does, he doesn't have parents that were magicians or wizards. He never went to a real school of magic. He, he, he's on a set. Do you understand that? He did none of those things, including J.K. Rowling or her friends or anybody that she knows did any of those things. I, however, know these people. I know the number one teenage greatest female wizard in the world. I hung out with her all the time. My story is real. I am essentially Harry Potter. Okay? I'm the samurai wizard. I'm not the boy wizard. I'm a samurai wizard. Okay? I dominated these, the, uh, the, these countries. Obviously, we already went through that. And the thing is this. If I had done all these things... Wouldn't you think if I had actually done all these things, which I did, you see the video, you can check it out. Don't you think I would have a pretty darn good career ahead of me? Think about that for a second. 
Huh? I mean, yeah, maybe I'd be doing some great birthday parties right now, right? Yeah, I, I think I'd have a pretty decent career, right? I, I'm, I'm the samurai, number one samurai wizard of all these countries and the number one wizard, uh, uh, kid wizard in the world of magic, beating David Copperfield. I'd have a decent career, I would think. But what ended up happening afterwards? Why haven't you ever heard of me? Why is the secret being revealed now? Why can't you Google this? Well, then what happened was I actually vanished from the world of magic. And that's what happened. I vanished from the world of magic. What happened was, and I actually re-emerging today. That was 25 years ago. And today you'll see that I'm here. And oddly enough, that's kind of very similar to how Harry Potter movie ends. Now this part, for m the people that don't watch the Harry Potter series, you, you, you don't know what I'm talking about here. But I just watched the, the, the series because I, I, was, I had to do the research because I'm not into Harry Potter. I'm not a Harry Potter, I'm not a Potterhead, okay? But I watched it as research. At the end of the movie, after he beats the world's greatest evil wizard, it says 19 years later, you don't know what happens to him. Just nothing, ha you, like you don't even know what happens to him. 19 years later, he is dropping off his kids to the H Hogwarts train station to take them off to the School of Wizardry. 19 years later, so you don't know what happened to him. Interesting, because that's the exact same story of me. It's not 19, it's 25. I reemerge, finally, after 25 years of a silence, and coming out and saying, hey, you know what? I am him. I'm the boy wizard. I'm the samurai wizard. So let's do a recap of what we talked about today. I'm glad you stuck with it the whole time. I appreciate all of you answering all the questions. So we covered today of a recap of who I am. And, and this, is, this is my professional side as an entrepreneur, as an author, as a business consultant. And whether you want to accept what I have just explained to you or not, that, that really doesn't matter. I'm just going to continue on as my personal and my business life. This is what happened over 25 years ago, but I'm back. But I did talk about who I am as an entrepreneur. And then I explained to you that I have a secret and why I chose not to explain my secret or tell anybody about it for 25 years or even allow it to show up anywhere on Google till now. I also gave you a couple of questions. So this is where I'm going to start answering the questions. Okay. Question number one, the bodybuilder, who's the story about? You should already have the, you should, you, I'm sure most of you got the answer correct. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Okay, good. Question number two. Oh, did I miss that one? Okay. Question number three. Okay. We're going to skip two because I'll do that at the end. What would you do if you were a wizard in high school? Now, Everybody has a different answer. Some of you said I want to be popular. Some of you said I want to ask out the prettiest girl. Some of you guys have a different answer. My answer was I did all of it. I did all of it. I, I was with the popular girls. Uh, I was with the all the cool activities. I led a football team in national championships. I won all the I won all the awards I wanted to win. I did all of it. Okay, but what would you do? You have your own uh, your own choice. That's your answer. It's something you keep yourself. Next one was was okay why does the boy wizard mac stories max so much well i'm going to tell you that answer in a minute it is number question number two and number five and how did i do all this when i when you when i when i asked you how did i while i was being the number one samurai wizard in the world of magic japan uk and the united states while i'm doing that how is it possible that i also done all those things over to the right and my answer is, well, it wasn't because I'm lucky, okay? If some of you answered, well, you're lucky. You're just lucky, okay? If you think I'm crazy, whatever. I'm just, I, you should not even be here listening to me at this point. Just get off, okay? <laughs> All right. Or stupid, you know, it's like, okay. Talented, I'll tell you this. I've seen some talented people that were at, at uh, the academy, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. Very talented dancers, actors, stuff like that. I would say they're very talented. If you believe I'm talented, thank you very much. But that's not my answer. I'm not talented. 
If you think I'm smart, it's fine. Okay, I am pretty smart. I'm pretty good at math. I will tell you that. But that's not the reason. Actually, the reason isn't even because I'm a wizard by definition. I have another power that I'm not going to reveal on this video. I will reveal on the next one. The reason I can do that is because actually go check out the video Courtney Miller interview part four and I reveal why I'm able to do it. But the real w reason is because I'm a wizard. I actually am a wizard. Okay, I'm a wizard because I'm not a magician. A magician doesn't win all these things. Magicians just do coin tricks, right? That's what they do, but I'm not a magician. Okay, and the final one is why does the boy wizards Max so much. Why do they match? Okay. My answer. Are you ready? What is my answer? My answer is well, just like the story goes, here's the here's the answer, just like the story goes, as Harry Potter is taking his kids off to Hogwarts the school of wizardry, I have four kids. If you're such a wizard, Ken, why aren't your kids any wizards, right? Well, I don't think I'm going to let myself answer that question. I did say I'm going to answer it, but the, here's my answer. My, I'm going to have one of my children answer that question for you. One of my children is going to answer that, answer that for you. Let's take a look of uh, which one. I'm going to have all the way to the right. If you see all of my four children there, to the right is Ashi Hayashi. I'm going to have her answer that story, okay, that question. Based on true events, she has a story that she'd like to tell you. Her story is actually a very interesting because when she was born, the re another reason why I disappeared from the world of magic was when she was born, they actually said that there's a 30% chance she'll have cerebral palsy, another 30% chance she'll be blind, and another 30% chance she'll have mental retardation. And that's the diagnosis that they gave us when she was born. It was unfortunate. They asked us, would you like us to pull the plug? That was 16 years ago. Today, she decides to tell the story of her father and her grandmother, the real story of the boy wizard. Okay? So I'm going to have you watch this video. Here it is. Okay, that's her one of her promo videos that she has, and it's like, okay, well, that's really nice. That's an inspirational story of, of her writing the book. It's the book called Ken Hayashi and the Magic Academy. It's the real story of what happens at the Academy of Magical Arts and my adventures as the boy wizard that does all these things that inspired, or coincidentally, or whatever you call it, the story that's the most popular story today. Okay, but if you're going, okay, well, that's fine, but that's, you guys are just magicians. You're a magician. My kids, my children are not magicians. They are, however, have some certain abilities, though. And Ken, if you're really a wizard, shouldn't your kids be a wizard, too? Good question. What else has Ashley done? Well, let me just show you another video of what she also has done on top of publishing her book and becoming a best-selling author before she was 16 years old. At 15 years old, she became a best-selling author. Let's go watch that now.
Okay, so that's Ashley's story of she's going to have the real story of the real boy wizard or the samurai wizard that did all that stuff. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the definition of a wizard as we had defined it before. Would you say that that person, well, she, she does not practice magic in the traditional sense, like just like me, she doesn't do any card tricks or coin tricks. Okay. However, is she a wise person? Possibly. But would you say a person that is a world karate champion, a black belt, a world rated choreographer, an international chef, and a visual artist that both illustrated and written her own book, of a person of amazing skill or accomplishment? If she's not, I wonder who is. So, by definition, Ashley is also a wizard. So, at this point, I want to thank everybody for going through this lecture with me. I, part, I, I appreciate everyone here to go through the questions with me, go on this journey. Please make sure to comment any other suggestions or thoughts you have on it. I know it's a lot longer than what we expected, but I, I really wanted to just give you as much information as you have that, I mean, that you can ha have to make an informed decision of what has actually occurred on this whole lecture today. So again, this is Ken Hayashi, also known as the Samurai Wizard, 25 years ago, and I'm back. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.